breathe <laughs> live. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit late this morning. Um, whenever I think I've got Facebook, I, I get a curveball. And this morning I've woken up with a bit of a headache and um, just not feeling on top of the world this morning. And yet I'm feeling on top of the world. Isn't it so strange? So good morning, my beautiful tribe, whoever's here this morning. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for being here. And just want to say you can give yourselves a high five for being here on a Saturday morning and coming to listen to um, another Facebook Live about how do we do this thing? How do we manage our brain? How do we get happy? How do we take a break? And uh, it's one of my passions. It's, some, it's something I never fail to stop talking about. And I think I talk about it so much that I sometimes um, irritate my friends <laughs> because they, they like, you always start talking in dopamine and serotonin and oxytocin. And I kind of see these things everywhere. So I'm always thinking, where, are the, where can I see these chemicals at play? So what I do want to say is that my, these concepts and thoughts and a lot of the thoughts that I bring across are ways that I've made sense of concepts for me. So they're not necessarily scientific and they, they hold true for me. So I share from my own experience, my own understanding. And so I want you, when you hear me talk, always to think about, okay, how can I maybe incorporate this? How, how, how does, does this feel true for me? Does this maybe not feel true for me? And everything is fine and everything is good. And the main thing is that we all want to get uh, sober. We want to have happy lives and we want to have meaningful lives. And we want to feel like life is worth living, life is worth getting up for. And we want to find ways to, to have pleasure in our life that don't have negative consequences. And uh, so I'm going to be talking about that today and how do we manage this beautiful brain of ours, this brain that's wired for keeping us safe. It's, it's not wired to make us happy. That's on us. And, and when we understand, uh, I will say, when we understand our motivational triad, which is avoid pain, get to pleasure and get, get to it in the quickest way, we can, and how the neurochemicals and the neurotransmitters play a huge role in this. When we get to understand that, um, we can create self-awareness, we can create self-understanding, and we can start um, being in the driving seat and not being at the mercy of our programming and our, sub and our motivational triad, which is always going to look for ways to avoid uh, pain and find pleasure. So if you are new here today and you are contemplating taking a break or you're going to go on the sober bus um, or you've been um, and you've been sober for many years or many months, all is good because for all of us, whether we've been um, sober for a year, for one month, one day, we all still face the motivational triad in our life. And we're still looking always for ways to uh, get more dopamine because dopamine is our uh, reward uh, neurotransmitter. It's our motivational transmitter. It's, it's, it's our anticipation, our excitement. Our, uh, everything, everything about that is about um, our dopamine. Our dopamine wants to get us to move towards. So it's it's really a, a neurotransmitter that's all about movement and action and reward. So, and it's not on tap. <laughs> that was, that's what, one thing that I'm realizing more and more. And I have, I've heard it so many times and, and yet it doesn't always quite sink in that um, dopamine doesn't like build up and we don't have these enormous reserves of dopamine that we can just borrow every time we want to feel motivated. We've got to actually do something to release the dopamine. And once the dopamine 
um, is released and we are we go into finding a reward then as soon as we get the reward <laughs> it goes back to um, pain actually because our brain is always looking for homeostasis so it's always looking for um, to get back into a balance so we we do something that excites us the dopamine goes up and then it goes up and then it needs to come back down so when it comes back down it first drops below the baseline and then it comes back up and then we have this kind of what I call the Goldilocks moment the Goldilocks feeling of everything is okay and then it drops down again and we think no we need to get some it's this is a bit painful this is a bit uncomfortable so we get motivated again to get the dopamine up and so throughout the day actually our dopamine is always playing so it's releasing and then it's dropping and then it's releasing and it's dropping and when it's dropping we often feel the discomfort if we if we um, stimulate our dopamine too much by drinking or taking substances or social media or anything that really releases a lot of dopamine then it drops way below the, t the baseline and then it's then it's then it's then that's where the addiction actually comes in because then we just want to get back to baseline and then we want to get back to feeling good again what also just really amazed me was that with dopamine I used to think well when, I, when I'm feeling good, then why am I wanting that feeling to last? So I want it to last. So just think about watching a series on Netflix. And, and then I'm thinking, okay, so I'm really enjoying the first episode. Then I want to have another one. Then I want to have another one. I don't want it to stop. Why? Because subconsciously my, ba my brain knows that it's going to drop it's going to drop back to below baseline i'm going to get uncomfortable and then i'm going to get back to homeostasis so when we understand this it makes so much sense why we want the extra cookie why often when we're feeling really good we want that to last and then we want to bring in substances to make that last longer which is the second glass of wine the third glass of wine the fourth glass of wine we just subconsciously our brain is telling us we're going to drop back into pain and we want to avoid pain but we can't avoid it because it's part of life which brings me to a book that I read many many moons ago and at the time I was kind of uh, it wasn't really resonating that much um, it was a book called The Road Less Traveled by Scott Peck and the first line of the book is life is difficult so basically get over it life is difficult and I was like rebelling against it why should life be difficult and now I understand it from of course life is difficult because the brain is always wanting the discomfort the hard to motivate motivate us to go into movement and into action forward it's part of our survival mechanism it's part of our wiring and that's where we get our dopamine and so understanding from for me understanding that when i'm feeling uncomfortable or when i'm feeling slightly down and I, I ask myself so how can i get to a a natural pleasure that's going to lift me up slightly so that i i get the dopamine but i don't want to get too much dopamine because then i know oh the opposite is i'm going to really drop way below baseline so that the brain can come back to the Goldilocks moment. So if I can just fill my bucket up in the during the day with, with lots of little pleasures, lots of little rewards. And um, one of the ways that I heard to, to also do this is by looking towards our immediate environment and saying, what do I need to, what can I need, what can I take care of right now? And what needs to be taken care of right now and then doing that with our best intention with humility with kindness and with love um, dr. Andrew Huberman who's a neuroscientist was interviewing uh, another neuroscientist who is actually an, no, she's a psychiatrist and she deals with addictions and she talks about finding pleasure in in our immediate environment finding pleasure in the moment finding ways to make things better 
whether it's cleaning up our space, whether it's taking out the, the trash and then seeing, oh, our neighbor's trash can is still there or I can see the, that there's something, that there's trash on, the, on my neighbor's pavement, picking it up and putting it in the trash. Those little gestures actually give us a beautiful boost of pleasure and dopamine. And when we find little ways to do this through the day, um, Loretta also, Browning also says, like little pockets, find little pockets of reward and pleasure throughout the day. And that's the way that you can start building up your, your, um, your happy bucket, your I feel good bucket, so that you don't feel depleted. It's when we feel depleted that we really look for the, the high or just get me out of this pain. So that's really dopamine. Dopamine wants to us to move towards pleasure. So here you are today, and if you what are, what is a little goal? What are little goals that you can set for yourself during the day that are going to bring you into compassion? Maybe doing an act of kindness, doing something in your environment, or whatever job you're doing, doing it to your best ability. It's going to give you a little bit of pleasure, and each time you reward yourself with achieving it. So often we are. We want to set ourselves these like huge goals, and they just feel so way out of reach. And it's like saying, I'm, I'm, I'm doing sober spring, and I'm going to give up alcohol forever. And it just, we can't see the forever. It feels so far away, but we can see it for today. So for today, I can choose to have, to be on the bus. So it's a beautiful goal to set, to say I'm going to go on the sober bus. I'm going to take a break and, I'm, and then take a break for 30 days. Really set that intention. That's the goal. That's what we want to do. 30 days, then 66 days, then maybe 100 days. We can, then we start stacking up our successes. We, but we first learn how to do that by stacking up little successes, little pockets today. So we're kind of hooking ourselves up by the little actions we take today for the big reward later for the possibility of how life can look, how life can be um, beyond addiction, beyond just having to craving wine every night and waking up hungover. When we start living in the possibility of creating that future us from today, from the actions we take today, and that's what we focus on. That is our dopamine. That's where we motivate towards. And being on the sober bus is a beautiful way to, to get your dopamine going every day. So every day you are on the bus, you also then get your, what I call your oxytocin, not what I call, but, but uh, neuroscientists have identified as our happy connection, I am safe um, neurotransmitter that goes hand in hand with dopamine. We, as much as we need the dopamine and we need to m be motivated, we also get very motivated when we are in a group, we are in a tribe. So find your tribe, be on the bus, oxytocin. I'm safe, I'm with other people, um, I'm going to be doing this, I'm going to get, I'm going to get some encourage, encouragement here. So, and what ha often happens when we are on the bus, and now we're getting the oxytocin, and we're getting the connection, and we're starting to feel safe, then we might start what happens if we look at um, corporations, companies, if we look at the mammal kingdom, the mammal, everybody feels safe in the tribe. But once we're in the, in the, in the tribe, we want to get our status within the, in the tribe. We want to get the recognition. We want to get the job promotion. We want to get the well done for your five days sober. And you're doing so well. What gets released then is, is the serotonin, our sense of worth, a sense of value. And the good part of it is, and, I've, and, and this is what came up for me also during this week with, with us in one of my sessions, is it's very exciting to get on the bus because then we get the dopamine. And then once we're on the bus, we start doing what we do. We start comparing ourselves. Like, see, let me see who am I on par with? Who's doing better than me? Oh my gosh, I messed up. And often then, when we start feeling that we're not really part of the group because we're not doing well enough, we're not getting the recognition, we keep falling off the bus, so we keep relapsing. 
then we're not getting the serotonin kick and then we can fall off and just say, oh, it's just easier to leave. Why? Because it's too painful. Then if we understand what's happening there in the motivational triad, we, we're wanting to avoid the pain and of, of not achieving, of not getting the serotonin, of not getting the reward from the dopamine, we're not, not doing well, of not achieving our goals, then often we just get discouraged and we give up. So I'm going to offer you that no matter where you are on the bus, understand when you get the feelings of other people are better than me, um, maybe I'm not going to make this and what's wrong with me, just stop and say serotonin here. And I can get serotonin other ways. I can get serotonin also from the thoughts that I generate. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that, the importance of using our thoughts to generate these transmitters. I'm doing the best I can. I'm, I'm learning to stay on the bus. I'm learning to have longer stretches. I'm, I'm getting better every day. Those little pep talks to yourself are far better than when we're shaming ourselves or guilting ourselves. Guilting and shaming ourselves might have gotten you here to being on the bus, well done, but from now on, we want to bring in more love, oxytocin, connection for self. Uh, then the other, well, other one that we, that we have is endorphins. And endorphins get released when we have pain. So, and also again, endorphins are not supposed to be released all the time. But we kind of get addicted to that feeling because we might be in psychological pain. We want to mask that psychological pain with bliss. And endorphins, like if you hurt yourself, um, you twist your ankle and you're out hiking, endorphins get released so that you can get to a safe place and take care of the ankle. And then the pain will come back again. And we don't want that pain so often because one of the ways that we manage pain these days is through opioids, it's through painkillers. So we are always looking for ways to avoid pain, but sometimes we use such concentrated substances, they release then so many endorphins that we get addicted to that feeling. Uh, I was really amazed hearing the other day of a woman who got um, addicted to water. Can you imagine getting addicted to water? And the reason being that when you drink enormous amounts of water, um, your body goes into a state of shock and you're actually just flushing out so many nutrients. That, but what you're getting then is you're getting a huge amount of endorphin relief. And so often when we are in pain, we want to avoid the pain. And, we, and then we look to endorphins. We over-exercise. We, we, we stretch our body through by, by putting our body through a lot of um, pain to get the endorphins. Often people start cutting themselves. Um, anorexia is another way of we, we starve ourselves, where we actually get endorphins released. So a healthy way to get our endorphins released when we are in pain is to find laughter, is to find a way to just laugh. Maybe just posting also on, on the Sober Spring a funny TikTok video, um, like little short videos that are just fun. Have your own videos or your own clips that get you laughing from the belly. And set yourself a goal to have a really good belly laugh at least once a day. And you will get your, your, your natural endorphins will be releasing that will help you deal with the pain and the discomfort that life brings all of us. So when I really understand Scott Peck now talking about life is hard, life is always 50-50. Life is, and, and when, I, when I made peace with that, that today I might not feel great. This morning I didn't feel woke, wake up feeling on top of the world. Uh, I still went to do my Nia, and, I still, and then I, I thought, oh, I always feel better after Nia. But I'm not completely on top of the world today. And it's okay, because tomorrow I'm going to feel better. Tomorrow is a brand new day. And how can I generate a little bliss bomb for myself today? Uh, bliss bomb is, is a beautiful concept that I learned from my friend Simone. She, when she first spoke about bliss bombs, those are like little endorphin, little endorphin pieces that we can bring, a little dance. We dance like crazy to some beautiful music, even if it's for five minutes or one minute. 
when we jump up and down, when we put on a really funny clip, when we laugh. What are your bliss bombs? So I'm asking you just to think about what are some of the bliss bombs that I can bring into my life? Some, a way that I can laugh. What brings me joy? What brings me pleasure? And when we've used a substance, or we've used social media, or we've used busyness for a long time, it's not that easy to, to generate our natural pleasures anymore. What happens when we drop down to the, below the baseline is that often we have cortisol that gets released. And cortisol is our stress uh, chemical. So when we have a lot of anxiety and we, ha we have a lot of negative thoughts and we have a lot of shooting ourselves and not being good enough and we are on the bus and we are not just, just not feeling that we are part of, part of it, we get released on one hand cortisol when there's too much stress. So just look how much, how much uh, stress is there in my life? How much stress am I experiencing during the day? What is stressing me? How can I bring in more calm? And then the other one that I found very interesting, um, which is when we don't have, have enough connection, oxytocin, then um, there is a neurochemical that gets released, a chemical that gets released into our body called a tachykinin. And, and when Stacey Danford spoke about the tachykinin, I was fascinated. I was like, hmm, tachykinin. What could this be? What, what does it actually do? Uh, it gets released, so it makes us uncomfortable. And, and um, Andrew Huberman also says, you know, he tells himself when he hasn't had connection and he's been working too much, it's time now to socialize, it's time to go and see a friend, it's time to, because I'm building up too many tachykinins. And tachykinins are actually um, inflammatory, they, they cause inflammation in the, in the body. So I find it, found it very interesting that when I um, was at the height of my addiction, I was so full of inflammation. And I was numbing out so much, and even when I went off alcohol, for many months afterwards, I still had high inflammation. And one of the ways that I healed the inflammation out of my body was to connect to my body, to connect to my breath, and to, to breathe love into the painful spaces. If I had a painful shoulder, I would just, my legs were paining, I would just send love there. I would breathe, breathe in, and I would just send love, and I would stretch in, and I would hold, and I would just find the pain slowly subsiding. And it was a, so I reflect back on that now as I was connecting to my body. I was feeling into my body. I was sending loving thoughts into my body. I, I wasn't creating more inflammation and more cortisol by saying, what's wrong? I need to fix this. Because so often we go into, I need to fix this. Something's wrong. Um, what's, what's going on with me? And, and we go into the fear of, and then we go back into the motivational triad of what if I'm going to die? I need to find a pill. I need to find. A, I need to take anti-inflammatory. Something I've got to take to take this away. Oh, I've got so much pain. I, I need a painkiller. Um, but when we can sometimes just really, really work with our bodies and drop into our bodies, it's amazing. That that's where the connection happens. And when we can connect to ourselves and to others, I think we have a beautiful balance. So as you are embarking on your journey, I want you to think about every day. How am I going to generate a little bit of dopamine, a little bit of excitement, a little bit of motivation, a little bit of a reward um, that's going to keep me on track today? Where am I going to feel valued? How am I going to talk to myself from my serotonin? My connection, I'm going to post on the tribe. And another beautiful aspect of our neurochemicals and, and getting our brain health back is by telling the truth. So many of us, when we um, get into addictive patterns, we lie. And then it becomes almost like a second nature. It's almost like we become addict addicted to lying and we no longer tell the truth. And so I always tell myself um, what Raya Elias said to Liz Gilbert. She said to her, 
tell the truth, always tell the truth, because the truth has legs and it will stand up. So find ways to be ready to tell your truth, to be truthful with yourself. See, am I hiding things? Am I not telling the complete truth today? Because that's part of, again, the secrecy, the isolating, it's starting to separate, it's starting to separate us. But when we tell the truth, so when we tell the truth on our WhatsApp group and we say, last night I messed up, or I, I, had, I binge watched last night and this is what I did, and we just tell the truth, we don't just tell things, say, tell the things that we think people want to hear, and we just say, I'm really struggling today. Um, who's got, who can help me out today? Or last night I, I had a drink and now what? Then, but we tell the truth. So often we feel the shame and we, and, and we hang on to our secrecy that we rather want to leave the group. But it's so important on this journey to feel that you're part of a tribe, to use your tribe, to, and to give back to your tribe. Remember when I was saying that part of the dopamine is also when we do acts of kindness for other people. What, and that's where I find our world, our addiction world, so empowering because we, we learn to pay it forward. We learn to be there for each other and we release beautiful um, oxytocin, we downplay our tachykinins, our infl inflammatory markers, and our cortisol. So when we get into compassion and kindness and love, so I want you to, to em embark on this journey from the love lens, from, the, from love and compassion for you, for others. Find ways every day where you can do an act of kindness or when you can recognize somebody doing something kind for you. Recognize it. Look for these things. Because at the heart of all of us, what, what, gets, what generates um, our, our life and our stories are our thoughts. So our thoughts really create our feelings. And our th so when we are feeling disconnected, we can look to a thought that we can bring in. How can I bring in a, a thought that's going to make me feel more connected to the group? When I'm realizing I'm having thoughts that are separating me, or I'm, I'm having thoughts of, ah, oh, this is too hard. Recognize it, feel it, and then choose. And that's where we get our prefrontal cortex. I call it our sage brain. So our lizard brain is the one that, that um, wants, to keep, wants to avoid pain at all costs and look for pleasure. This is not good. That's our lizard brain, our Godzilla brain. Um, we had a beautiful um, competition running about name your lizard brain. But then we have our teen brain, which is where we get all, it's our limbic system. That's where we get all our rewards and all our carrots and, and all our, every time we get a dopamine hit and we want to go for more and more dopamine hits there. Um, but the, these two brains, when they, when they are competing for each other, uh, I don't want to have more pleasure, I don't want to have the pain, I want to have more pleasure, then we burn out. So what we have is we have the sage, we have our prefrontal cortex, and when we, when we strengthen our prefrontal cortex, we get to direct these brains. We get to say, I know what, I can bring in the thoughts and the feelings that are going to create a beautiful day today, that are going to create a pleasure for me in the moment, versus just wanting to bliss out and numb out. I'm going to use my sage to to drop into my pain, to feel the pain and, and learn from it and then get back to my Goldilocks moment. Notice when I'm going up too much bring, and notice when I'm going down again. Just becoming very curious about how my chemicals are um, working. Do I need more connection? What is it that I'm needing today that's going to bring me up to my baseline, that's going to get my neurotransmitters going? I'm in charge here. I'm the driver. So one of the ways the ways that we strengthen our sage is by interrupting these two. We just stop and we slow down. And meditation, journaling, going for a walk, getting quiet, getting bored, so good. It's in the boredom, it's in the quiet. So when we slow it all down, we, when we can just be that we, our creativity starts. And we are really here 
to just to create, to create a beautiful day. We're not here just to consume, consume. So I want you to think about how much, what am I creating today? What a beautiful day am I creating for myself today? We don't need to just consume, consume to get my rewards. How am I strengthening my inner sage? So for all of you, I, I wish you a beautiful day. I'm going to see who's here. Um, let me just see. Oh. Ross, uh, hi, good morning, Ross. Good to see you. Murray Louise, oh, fantastic. You had a birthday yesterday, so happy birthday to Murray Louise. And I'm wondering if Flick is here, who's also having a birthday. Vanessa, Merlene. Yeah, brain chemistry is so interesting. Um, and we are so excited that uh, Janet has managed to get two neuroscientists to come separately to our Zoom cafe. The Zoom cafe is a beautiful way to get your oxytocin, to get your connection. Here at Tribe Server, you're actually so covered. We cover all of those transmitters and we help you find ways to generate them. Just click in. Yeah, life is difficult, get over it. Um, there was another part of um, Scott Peck's book that also used to really like, it irked me, where, where he spoke about, um, they did this experiment with children and they put them in a room and each child was given a, uh, some sweets. And they were told, if you don't eat these sweets, and, and we, they're gonna put you on a timer and you're gonna leave the room and when we come back, if you haven't eaten the sweets, then we're going to give you double the amount of sweets. And then you see this, all these little kids. Some of them are like really like willpower. I'm not going to have the sweets. I'm not going to have the sweets. And then, this is what, and then some of them are just like, I'm not going to have the sweets. They've already got it down. They, they can delay gratification. And then there are others that just eat the sweets. And then there was this one little girl who was just like, mm, maybe just one. And then she would take one. And then, and then eventually she just put all of the sweets in her mouth. And I could so relate. And... Now, when I think back to that beautiful moment and I, I remember it, I, I say to myself, yes, Lynette, this is what you do when you want to take away, when you want to get to instant pleasure. And you just, what, you, what we're wanting to learn when we, when we go on this journey of sobriety is we want to learn how to delay the gratification so that we get the long-term pleasure later and have a bit of discomfort now for the long-term gain. I didn't get it at the time, but I, get, I so get it now. Small pleasures are key. Yeah. Love the happy bucket analogy. Thank you, Janet. Um, took myself out for a nice breakfast. Yeah, these little things that we do. Connection is the opposite of addiction. Yeah, we don't want those tacky kindness. Oh, I see them as these little gremlins that are coming there to cre create inflammation. Get some connection, Lynette. Uh, better late than never, Lucy. Yeah. Oh, it's so good to see you all. Yeah. Hi, Sibylla. Okay, you've given us a really good comedy, um, Impossible Jokers on the Comedy Central channel. I'm so going to watch it because one of the things I don't do enough is I don't laugh enough. Yeah, great tip, great tip. Thank you. And um, so beautiful. Oh, it's so beautiful to see you here. Hi, Roman. Yeah, and you're saying that the 50-50 concept really challenges your perspective. And going for the 80-20 is better. And again, absolutely. Um, for me, when I, when I look at the way my life stacks up, I, used to, I, I kind of have made peace with 50-50. If I get 80-20, wow, 80 fantastic, 20 not so good, that's awesome. Then, I'm on, then you're on a roll, Roman. But circumstances always happen in our life and we don't, can't control them. And we have no, but, we, but when we know that whatever circumstance comes our way, we can respond to any circumstance with the way we think and feel and um, that gives us some. That give, that gave me some power. It's, it's what I. It's how I create meaning. It's what I make it mean that takes that creates the pain. Yeah. Oh. 
Oh, thank you. So Roman is saying that <laughs> to see my kind face and hearing my gentle voice gives him a dose of oxytocin. You've just given me a dose of oxytocin and serotonin. Thank you, Roman. Thank you, all of you, for being here today, for commenting, for bringing your beautiful selves here. I appreciate you so much. And uh, let's do this. Let's build beautiful lives together. Let's get our dopamine, our serotonin, our oxytocin, our endorphins. Let's get them vibing together and um, really just saying, Bye-bye cortisol, bye-bye tachykinins. We don't need too many of you. You're there to keep us on track. And understanding our brain is where our power lies. Working with our brain uh, versus against it. Thank you. So lots of love to all of you. And I shall see you again in two weeks' time. Bye.